So what is the big stink about medium format cameras? First of all, what is a medium format camera? Second of all, is it worth the high price tag? And three, is it the right one for you? So today we're going to be comparing the Hasselblad X1D2 to the Sony A7R3. That was quite a mouthful. And I'm gonna give you my opinion on which one makes more sense for you. So we're in Bern, Switzerland right now, and we're gonna walk around, take some photos, and a little later on, I'll show you those side by side. most familiar with are an APS-C cropped sensor or a full frame sensor and that's pretty much what you're using most of the time on your digital SLRs but there is also a medium format camera or a medium format sensor. Basically what this means is it's a digital imaging sensor that is mimicking 120 millimeter film. So the images that this sensor is capturing are slightly smaller than a large format film size but still bigger than a full frame sensor. The most distinct feature of a medium format camera or a medium format sensor is the distinct aspect ratio. It's four by three versus a standard three by two that you're used to on your digital SLR. So this gives it a very unique look that I'm kind of a fan of. So first of all, let's talk about the Hasselblad X1D2. Here's what I love about it right off the bat. The design, the body, it looks beautiful. It feels great in your hand. It has this massive LCD touchscreen in the back, which is super handy for selecting different focus points, for using the menu. It's very, very intuitive. In terms of the autofocus, it's a little bit slower, and especially compared to the Sony A7R 3 it's a lot slower, and Chris and I noticed this today when we were taking photos of each other. Usually when we're shooting with the Sony, we can just like fire off a high shutter and we can move and do all these different poses and really get some action shots, and they're a little less posed that way, but using the Hasselblad, we had to kind of wait for that shutter to go off, change our pose, wait again, wait for the autofocus. So that's not my favorite thing. So in terms of how this performs in low light, not so great. Again, the Sony definitely wins in this department, but I'm not done yet. If you didn't already know, the Hasselblad has a Sony sensor in it. So you're probably wondering what's the big difference. Well, this one has 50 megapixels and the A7R3 has just over 42. But I know what you're gonna say, the A7R4 has over 60. I think it has 61. So yeah, it has more. What Hasselblad is really known for is their color science. So what you're getting is great tonality with this and I've already noticed that today. It looks really good and Sony isn't really known for that and is actually kind of bashed for that just a little bit. So who is this camera best for? It definitely has a certain look to it with that four by three aspect ratio because it's trying to imitate film. So if you're interested in fashion or editorial photography, or if you're putting your photography on magazines, then this one is commonly reached for. But if you're looking for a little more flexibility, if you want something that's better in low light, that has faster autofocus, then maybe you're better off going with Sony. The weight really isn't that big of a deal to me. This is still something I could take out shooting in the city as I did today. So it's really up to you, the kind of photography you shoot. And again, if you're willing to pay that price point. In terms of post-image processing with the Hasselblad files, they're big, you're gonna need more storage. The color depth is definitely something to note with the Hasselblad. It has outstanding color science, that's what it's known for, and Sony not so much. So if that's something that's important to you, then Hasselblad kind of wins. Overall, is the Hasselblad X1D2 worth the price? And I would say yes, it's half the price of the first version and it's really great for the prosumer that it's meant for if this is the look that you want. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video and you learned a little bit more about medium format cameras. If you liked it, please give it a like down below, subscribe if you're not already, and hit the bell to get notified when I post new videos and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.